Welcome to Citizen Crusader Reviews. My name is Scott, and today we're doing something a little different. Today's topic is going to be the fundamental rules for pistol safety, and indeed, plenty of other YouTube content creators have attempted to hit this same ball, I think with varying degrees of success. What I want to do, keeping with the theme of Citizen Crusader, is put a simple list of rules in your hands, as uh, assuming that you are newer shooters, that you are more casual shooters, but you still have a need to be safe, effective, and ready with your defensive firearm. We're going to put three rules in front of you, rules that in class I refer to as the Holy Trinity, and that kind of keeps in our Crusader theme, right? We're going to put these rules in your hands with an explanation of why you need these three rules. These are not the only rules that you will ever need to be safe with a firearm. These are not the only things that you will ever need to know to keep yourself out of danger and out of trouble. However, if you follow these three rules minimally all the time, you will have gone a long way to mitigate your risk of hurting yourself, someone else, or someone's property. So let's get into the holy trinity of firearm safety rules today on Citizen Crusader. talked about this is going to be a trinity of rules and really there are a lot of rules out there there are giant lists of things and they're all good things things that we're not going to talk about today but that you should still know at some point if you're going to go out and use a firearm especially on your own property these three rules are really more about handling firearms safely not so much operating them if it's time to operate the firearm we're going to do that but for casual handling for for manipulating the firearm if you come across a firearm that you weren't expecting to find, executing these three rules will ensure that you know what the danger level of that firearm is and that you, as the operator, are able to manage the danger around that whole situation. So, rule number one, and we're going to put this at the top of the trinity because it's rule number one for a reason. Hint, you already saw me doing it. Right up here at the top, we want finger. Off, trigger. Now that seems obvious, but I can tell you for a lot of people it's not. Unfortunately, I've had several students come into class, and I have to say they're almost always graybeards. Where, where are my, my more senior shooters at? Raise your hands. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You guys, when you come into class, you tend to want to pick up a firearm like this. If you see the firearm on the table, I can't tell you how many times, and I don't know why it's, it seems to be older male shooters, but they're the ones who do it the worst. They'll want to hook that, that trigger finger, and that's how they pick up the gun. I don't want you doing that. I want your finger away from the trigger. Your finger is off the trigger until you have made the decision that the thing downrange is a target and you want to shoot it. Your default action, your default gesture for handling a firearm is this. The finger should be up well outside of the trigger guard. If viewed from the opposite side, you should be able to see nothing of my trigger finger flesh down in there. Nothing. That should be completely clear. I and mean, even some of the, the diagrams, the pictures, and videos from credible firearms training organizations like NRA, I've even seen them have visible finger through there. Don't do that. Be better than that. Get your finger up outside of the trigger guard, away from the trigger entirely, until you have your sights on target and you have made the decision that now it's time to shoot. Then and then alone are you allowed to touch the trigger. Never before. Picking up the firearm, you pick it up with your finger away from the trigger. Assumingly, if that firearm is laying down on a table or bench or safe or whatever in front of you, you don't know if that thing's loaded or not. Picking it up by the trigger is a recipe for disaster. Finger is always outside of the trigger guard until the decision to fire has been made. And so that one, because it is the most important rule, so says I, we're going to call this the father. Deus Vault! Now, again, this is not the only model for these rules. These are three rules that when taken together will show you how they work together to help you avoid disaster. The second rule is to keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. Firearm is always pointed in a safe direction. So let's get it on the board and we'll talk more about what a safe direction is.
firearm pointed in a safe direction. Okay, that does not mean that you point the firearm at your safe. We don't do a lot of jokes on Citizen Crusader, but maybe that's why they're not gonna be great. The safe direction for you, you're gonna to have to figure out what that means, where that is. Here at my place, look, I live out in the country in rural Ohio. Very happy to live in the country in rural Ohio. For me, my safe direction is north. The closer we can get to zero degrees mapped north, the better it is. I have 400 yards of my yard behind my house and another mile of empty beyond that before we even get to the next road. And that road is very sparsely populated. There's only a few houses out there. Not that any number of downrange persons is acceptable. So really, for, for me, safe direction is that way. With the velocity of handgun cartridges, if even if I pointed north, fired, and hit nothing, that bullet is still in the dirt before it's out of my yard, or very, very close to it. Uh, remember that bullets fall as they're moving forward, and that the rate of acceleration down does not change with your forward velocity. That is to say, if I were to drop a penny at the same time that I pulled the trigger, the penny and the bullet hit the ground at the same time. The only difference is the bullet is about 400 yards that way. And the math on that is assuming about a 1,200 foot per second forward velocity and about a one second fall time to hit the ground. If you're moving forward at 1,200 feet per second and you're falling for one second, how far did you go before you hit the ground? 1,200 feet. Well, that's the length of my yard. Roughly. Quick caveman math, right? Okay, so safe direction. For many of you, the best you're going to be able to do is the safest direction available. There really is no such thing as a safe direction available. Jesus. Available. <laughs> trying to write and talk at the same time. There really is no such thing as a safe direction unless you are on the moon. If you are on thousands of acres on a ranch in Wyoming, and if you are, please get in touch so I can come out and shoot there. Uh, that, that's the only place where you really have a safe direction. You can be absolutely certain there is so much distance. For most of us who live anywhere near civilization, it's a compromise you're going to be pointing in the safest direction available. And that's going to require you to make some assessment. What is around you? How close are my neighbors? What material is there between me and the next risk that I don't want to shoot? And so here at, at my place, that assessment is easily due north. For you, it may be different. If you live in an apartment, pointing at the floor may not be a safe direction if people live beneath you. Likewise, for pointing upward. And I, and I hope that you're identifying what a safe direction is for you so that you can do your dry fire training, your trigger control and sight alignment practice with a known unloaded firearm, and you need a safe direction to point it in. Because even if we know that the firearm is unloaded, that's still not an excuse for us to break rule number two to point the firearm in the safe direction at all times. So that being rule number two, we're going to call it you guessed it. The sun. Deus Vault. Safest direction available. And it's up to you to figure out what that is. You have that obligation. I challenge you to take a tactical view of your living space and decide where a safe direction is. All right, now, rule number three. We're going to have a lot to say about this one, too. Firearm is unloaded until we are ready to shoot. I hope you love my handwriting as much as I hate it. Okay, firearm is unloaded until it's ready to shoot until it's ready to shoot. Now that's a prepositional phrase that carries a lot of weight. Firearms that we're not using defensively, firearms that we're not going to carry with us, 
to be ready to defend life and liberty. Firearms that are used for sport shooting, for hunting. If you have competition guns that you use, you're a three gunner, good for you. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'd like to get involved in that myself. Uh, guns that are stored need to be stored unloaded. Firearms stay unloaded until they're ready to use. Why? Well, imagine this. Suppose you're out and about today, you're in a terrible car crash and you die. The people who you leave behind while mourning you, they're going to have to get into your gun safe. Eventually they need access to that property and they're going to bring a professional out to help them get access to it. Now what do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy who left those firearms there in a safe condition for your surviving loved ones when they find it? Or do you want to be the guy who now put them at risk to be coming into the afterlife right behind you because the pistols that they're looking at now are loaded? And they don't know that. They're not you. The people around you, yeah, you're going to share your information and you're going to socialize as much of this as you can. And it's going to help them, but they're not going to come all the way down this firearms journey with you. They don't have the same obligation that you do as the firearm owner. So please, make sure if, if that happens, and I hope it doesn't, when they get into that safe, that you're not putting them at risk. The only firearms that should be loaded are those that are ready to use. So what does that mean for us defensively? Did I just tell you to go out into the world with an unloaded gun? No, absolutely not. Because when are we ready to use our defensive gun? All the time. When are we ready to answer the call to defend life liberty, and the lives of those that we care about all the time. We don't get days off. We're crusaders, right? Our job is to be ready, to have that higher level of readiness, that higher responsibility. And that means having your firearm, your defensive firearm, ready to use. Your tools are sharp. Your implements are ready. You are ready. So this one, for defensive firearms only, we have to make some compromises here. Your firearm, your defensive gun, is ready to use when you are ready to use it which I hope is just about all the time. Having said that, don't, don't get out of the spirit of things here. The spirit here is that firearms that are not what I like to think of as on duty, the gun that is tapped with being my go-to gun to respond to an unlikely situation right now if I need it. The, the Glock Gen 5 19 you just saw on my hip, that gun is on duty right now. The other firearms are not loaded. The only latitude I'm going to give you for this is going to be for your home defensive rifle, and I hope you have one. We don't really talk about rifles much on Citizen Crusader yet, I'm sure we'll get to it. Your defensive rifle, your AR pattern rifle, I'm going to let you have that one sort of loaded. Uh, legally, it would be considered loaded. Full magazine, empty chamber. Under the law, that counts as a loaded gun. To us as firearm shooters, firearms operators, we don't really consider that loaded. If I click the safety off and pull the trigger and it doesn't shoot, it's not loaded. Okay? For your defensive rifle, that one, go ahead and keep a full magazine in it on the empty chamber. That's what I do and what I recommend. Your comfort level with that may vary. Your success with that may vary. If you would rather have the magazine separate so that your bump in the night response is first to get the magazine in there, then charge the firearm and bring it to the fight and get it ready, fine. Your defensive pistol, I want your gun, the one that's on duty, I want it loaded, chambered, one in the, in the chamber and a full magazine underneath it and holstered. We're going to talk more about the bump in the night gun setup in the future where we talk about things like night sights, locking holsters, like positive retention holsters, and uh, um, white lights, like bright white lights, and the importance of having those in a nightstand package. But um, for the defensive gun that you carry around with you, if you're comfortable carrying a bigger package like that with the white light, by all means, go for it but I want that gun loaded. There is another condition of carry called Israeli carry or condition three in which some folks will carry a firearm with a full magazine but an empty chamber. The gun is not ready to shoot. If you're that person, I really hope you're training a lot on drawing, charging the pistol, and then getting it on target for that first hit. That is a, a very specific skill and discipline to practice and if you're not willing to put the time into developing that skill set so that you properly own it, then please don't carry your gun that way. I would much rather your gun is ready to go. Uh, as a, a brand new carrier myself, I don't know, maybe 12 years ago when I first started carrying firearms regularly, uh, for about a month I carried Condition 3 just to satisfy myself that my habits were good. 
that I wasn't exposing the trigger to accidental trigger pull, that my, I trusted my holster and, I, and I, I trusted my habits to be good with the firearm. Uh, took me about a month. I've heard others that'll carry that way for upwards of six months. Just know your gun's not ready. And if you need the gun, you have work to do before you are in the fight. That being clearing leather, getting it out of the holster, and getting the firearm charged. It's a compromise. Preferably, you would have the firearm that you have identified as being the one that you're going to reach for if the, the unlikely happens, that firearm is ready to shoot. It's ready because you're ready. You don't get days off. You're a crusader. So, firearm unloaded until ready to shoot, with the caveat here that your defensive guns are ready to shoot. You're ready to defend. So there you have it. That's the Holy Trinity. And uh, we'll call this one, <clears throat> excuse me, you guessed it, The Holy Ghost. And I kind of like that this one is the Holy Ghost because we have to talk a little bit more about the spirit of why defensive firearms kind of get a pass on this being unloaded until ready. The whole idea that we are ready, that they are ready. Deus Vault! So there you go, there's your Holy Trinity. And that's how it all ties together. Now, why are there three of these rules? Well, the idea is that you could... For some reason, let's not even discuss why, or, or if it's allowed, it's not allowed, but if you did manage to break one of these, you've got two others that kind of kind of catch you as like a safety net, right? So maybe I didn't point the firearm in a safe direction. That's not good. But the risk is mitigated because my finger is off the trigger and the firearm's not loaded. See how this works? Maybe... In a, in a moment of, of old man lapse of reason, I picked up the gun the way I know I'm not supposed to with my finger on the trigger. But that's okay because the gun was stored, unloaded, and it's pointed in a safe direction. So it's unloaded and pointed in a safe direction. If I grab it by the trigger, no problem. I haven't advanced danger against my fellow man in that, that circumstance. A firearm doesn't shoot. Where this gets tricky, again, in the spirit of a defensive shooter, is the firearms that are loaded. Now, I live in this stuff every day. I handle loaded firearms before 8 a.m. almost every single day. Those firearms are loaded, which means you had better have developed your habits and your muscle memory that you are automatic, that you know where a safe direction is and that your finger is off the trigger. This is the way to hold the gun. There is no other way to hold the gun. Until it's time you've made the decision to shoot, your finger is off the trigger. Even handling a firearm that's in a holster, moving the holstered firearm from its nightstand location back into the safe for storage for the day, I'm going to pick that firearm up in the holster with my finger alongside where the frame would be if the holster weren't there instead. So the finger is always off the trigger, and that's something that you're just going to have to develop from lots of practice being present of mind in that moment, stop for half a second. Before the hand goes up to pick up the gun, tell yourself, I'm going to pick it up the way Scott told me. I'm going to pick it up with my finger off the trigger. That half second moment to remember and remind yourself will ensure that you do it the right way. And eventually it'll become so automatic, you won't know how to hold a gun another way. Please go check out the reviews that we did for the Canik TP90A the SIG P226 Mark 25, and the SIG P365. And if you notice, when I'm shooting those guns, when you see me shooting them, bang, 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 I get to the end of that string of fire, look at that, it's already automatic. When I'm bang, 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 I'm done, and the gun comes back to my low ready position, finger is already out of the trigger guard. That's the way I want you to be. I want you to see that and imitate it. Get in that good habit. Finger is outside of the trigger guard, well away from the trigger, along the frame. Practice it with a known unloaded gun while pointing in a safe direction in your own home. Make sure that you have the opportunity to give yourself that good fighting chance, that you trust yourself. Any gun you see, even if it's a gun you've never even heard of, the first time you pick it up, your fundamentals of pistol safety are strong. Your finger is well outside of the trigger guard and along the frame. You're pointing in a safe direction, especially if you don't yet know if that firearm is unloaded. So there's your Holy Trinity. It's a, it is a three-legged stool. Okay, uh, you're, you're allowed to lean on any one of these if, 
things go wrong from negligence, or maybe it wasn't even your fault, it was someone else's, the other two will still hold you up. How do we feel about that? We feel pretty good? Good. Yeah, this is a, a concept that I've developed in class. I am not the author of these rules. I have merely uh, assembled them and presented them in this way so that hopefully you'll be able to remember them a little better. And it keeps with our Crusader theme, the, the Holy Trinity. Um, these rules are, are well available. They've probably been around for decades upon decades, and there are more. There are certainly more rules than this that you need to know when you go out to shoot. Things like knowing the absolute condition of your firearm. Is it loaded? Knowing what is your target, what's it made of, and what's beyond it. Those things are important too, but for the daily defensive pistol carrier who needs something to, to guide how they handle and move around with firearms, I think this three will get you there. Thanks for watching Citizen Crusader. I'm Scott, reminding you to be a crusader.